Hey, everybody. Good to talk to you this morning. I hope you're doing well. Been praying for you. I hope you've been praying for me. I wanted to, I wanted to just share a, a short word with you this morning. I'm not going to go real long, but I do want to share a word. And it's just, uh, to me, uh, again, what I've been trying to do on our devotional time is just trying to encourage you and uh, encourage us to keep on keeping on. There's a lot going on in this world and a lot of things we don't understand. But uh, what I do believe with all my heart is God is on his throne. And maybe during this time, you just need a piece of encouragement. Maybe maybe you just need a little help in, in, in putting your eyes on him because hey, that's where our hope is. And so, But I did want to share with you this more little specific word. And as I said, not too, too long. But I, I want to ask you this question as we get started this morning. Do you think God gives second chances to those that fail him? Do you think that God gives second chances to people who fail him? And here's what I want you to know. He certainly did so with a man named Peter. And I want to share that with you, but I want to first I want to first give you this verse this morning. Mark chapter 16 verse 7. Listen to what it says. And it says, "But go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee, Jesus Christ. He's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. Now listen to what he says here, the specific orders that the angel gives to the women here. But go tell the disciples and Peter. Now why did he do that? Let me tell you something. Peter was an interesting character, and he is an interesting character in our Bible as we study the disciples and all of those. But, you know, remember what he did. And I won't be able to tell you everything that he did, but he did in his pride. Peter was the guy among the disciples in a prideful way who declared to Jesus, <laughs> I'm your man no matter what. You can rely on me, Jesus, no matter what else happens to these other guys. You know, uh, that's to be expected. But I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to me, Peter says, you don't have to worry about me. I'll stand by you through thick and thin. It doesn't matter what happens. I'll die for you, Jesus. And essentially, that's what he was saying. I'll do anything for you. And you see that in Matthew 26. He was just kind of very arrogantly, almost pridefully, he was declaring that to Jesus. And yet Peter was among those disciples when the time came, when Jesus was arrested, that he ran away. Not only did he run away, but later on, uh, as Jesus was being trialed, he was being drugged through all of those trials, that Peter had an opportunity. He was asked point blank, are you a follower of Jesus? Are you a disciple of Jesus? This man who declared he's the most reliable of all the disciples, he, to a little girl, he declared absolutely not. He very vividly and very uh, loudly and said, there's no way I'm one of his followers. He was scared for his life and he denied knowing Jesus Christ. And you know, Peter failed so miserably in those moments that we're told that in Luke chapter 22 that he ran out into the night and he wept and cried bitterly, ashamed of himself. And so how amazingly compassionate, I think, that Christ, the risen Christ, was to Peter. You know, he he went to Peter and it says uh, in, this, in, in this verse that we used this morning, then an angel gave instructions to the women. You, you be sure and tell Peter that I'll be there. And you tell Peter, <laughs> I'm risen again. Specifically to Peter. Now that's just, that's amazing to me. This man who had failed him so badly, left him in his time of need. And yet Jesus so loved this man, so cared for him, and so wanted to encourage him. that He said, you tell Peter, I'll be there. And so uh, Jesus took Peter aside and, and later on he takes him aside and he allows Peter, he says, you know, he asks questions, Peter, you remember the story? 
do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? And, and, and they went through this three times. And Peter, yes, I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you. And Jesus said, go feed my sheep. And so Jesus allows him to kind of reaffirm their relationship and, and that, that he's still a man that Jesus loves and he cares about and he has, he has work for him to do. And so he gave Peter a great chance to reaffirm that commitment and that relationship. You know, the risen Lord also chose Peter later on. We've been studying in Acts on Sunday mornings a lot. Um, the, uh, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost. And it was Peter that, that God allowed to be the main spokesman for that. And, and then we're told as he spoke, as he preached, that 3,000 people were saved. Man, what a powerful thing that God would use this broken man, this failure in, in society's eyes to be the spokesman for the gospel and that many people would come to know him because of this man that God chose to use. And here's what I want you to think about as we talk about this. You know, God's desire for all of us is to take you from where you are today, right now, and bring you to where he wants you to be. Now, listen close. You may be a person out there today, like most of us have, have made a lot of mistakes along the way. And maybe you've made, in your eyes, and maybe in the world's eyes, you've made some worse mistakes than others. Maybe you've hurt people deeply. You've made decisions. You've made uh, decisions that have just broken people and hurt people that are close to you, that you love and you care about. You've broken relationships. You're in a broken uh, position now of, of relationships with others. Maybe there's people uh, that you've hurt deeply. Maybe that's true of you. I don't know. I can't know that. Maybe you've made decisions that have hurt you personally. Maybe you've made decisions that have placed you in places of that you wish you weren't. Um, here's what I, again, listen to this. God wants to meet you where you are right now and bring you to where he wants you to be. He did that with Peter. Why wouldn't he do it with you? You know, uh, he, uh, when he, when Jesus found his followers, his apostles and disciples, they were so defeated after uh, the crucifixion. When he found them and he, he goes to meet them, one of the very first words he uses in that interaction with them is the word peace. He says peace. In John chapter 20, in verse 19, he uses the word peace. Jesus' first words to you and to I, to me, I, <laughs> When we fail, maybe it's what he wants to say to you today. Maybe you're in the midst of that right now. You, you're maybe you're in the you're in the nighttime like Peter was, crying and, and, and bitterly and sad and depressed. And what Jesus would say to you is peace. Listen to me, peace. Jesus will find you in your despair. There's hope here. He'll find you in your despair and bring you peace. Then he will reorient your, himself to you like he did with Peter and, uh, and help you to, so that you can believe in him, you can follow him, you can do what, what he's called you to do. He's got things for you to do. And here, lastly, I want to say this. Don't give up if you failed the Lord. If you're in, a, in that situation right now, don't give up. You can't do that. Remember what happened to Peter. He was a great failure. If we want to rate him in, in that right now, he was a major failure. He promised to be there for his friend, for his Messiah, for his Jesus, and he failed him greatly. God has not finished with you yet. He wasn't finished with Peter, and he's not finished with you. He wants to make you into one of his disciples, a great disciple that he needs for you to be. I love you today, and I, I just want to encourage you. Thank God that he hasn't given up on any of us. Who hasn't failed 
in their following of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for listening today. Be encouraged. God loves you and he's, he's coming to get you. So uh, don't, uh, don't give up.